greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. amen. The only name under heaven and earth where man, woman, or child will be saved. If there be any other gospel preached other than the gospel of Jesus Christ, let him be a curse to preach it. Hallelujah. Today's message, if we had a title to it, would be called Seven Words That Will Change Your Life. Do you know what those seven words are? Well, they could be many words, couldn't they? I love you, Jesus. Jesus, be my Lord. Jesus, I've sinned. <laughs> I repent. But the seven words are... Have you figured them out yet? Jesus spoke seven simple words that have the potential to change your life that will bring you into the line with his plans and purposes for you on this earth. Many have said, what am I here? What purpose do I have? I don't have any purpose. Is your purpose to, to be a drunk all your life? Is your purpose to, to make a lot of money? Is your purpose to, to father a lot of children? What is your purpose? Deuteronomy 30, verse 19. This day I call heaven and earth as witness against you that I have set before you your life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life. Now choose life. God offers us a choice, doesn't he? Life or death, blessings or curses, heaven or hell. It's very simple. And he says, you choose. You watching this today on TV? This message could change your life. If you'll let it. God allows us to use our, our free will, doesn't he? We have a free will. Why do we have a free will? God doesn't dictate us. But we have a free will. You, every one of you in here has a free will, don't you? You can choose what you want to do. You can choose what you want to do in life. You can make decisions. Some biblical illustrations. Joshua, as for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Betty and myself made that decision. For me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. Praise God. And that's why that we have this ministry here. For those that come through that gate. For you shall serve the Lord thy God. Amen. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day, Lord. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor, Lord. Father, we pray over this sanctuary, over this property, Lord. We pray over this city, God. We come against the principalities of murder in this city. We find it. And Father, we ask you to cast it out for the dawn and national teeth, Lord. And Father, we pray, Father, that the Holy Spirit will touch every heart here, Father. And bless them in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. The rich young ruler, remember him? Chose his, his wealth over following Jesus. Matthew 19, 21. To back up. Now behold, one came and said to him, Good teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may enter and have eternal life? Enter into the kingdom of God. So he said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but one. That is God. Amen. Do you agree with me? That is God. But if you want to enter into life, keep my commandments. It's not hard to do, is it? But it was hard for this rich young ruler. He said to him, Which one? Jesus said to him, You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and your mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, All these things I have kept from my youth, what do I still lack? 
Jesus said to him, If you want to be perfect, go sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasures in heaven. Come and follow me. Oh my gosh, what if he just said that to some people here in Jacksonville? Go and sell all you have and give it to the poor and come and follow me. What if Jesus said to some people in Jacksonville to do that? But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowfully, for he had many, many possessions. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Surely I say to you that it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter in the kingdom of God. You understand it up to a point. But you say, how can a camel go through the eye of a needle? I've been asked that several times. Well, we're talking about the eye of the needle, the gate of Jerusalem. That's what we're talking about. And that's what Jesus was talking about. That was the eye of the needle because it was hard for a camel to go through the gate. He had to bend down and get on all fours and kind of squeak through it. And that was the eye of the needle that Jesus was talking about. Praise God. Paul wrote in 2 Timothy 4.10, Demas became Demas because he loved this world and has deserted me. Demas chose the world over serving the Lord. Many people do that, don't they, today? They, they choose the world. They choose the things of the world of serving Jesus. I've seen a lot of people make that decision. 